Today we're talking about an international Marvel Comics superhero, a lady who's helped both the X-Men and the Avengers, someone so strong she could take multiple strikes from the Hulk and get up afterwards. Today is all about Sabra. Ruth Batsaraf was born in Tel Aviv, Israel. During her pre-adolescence days, her powers began to manifest, but no one knew where she got them from, leading to suspicion that it was latent power. She's a mutant. The family was taken by the government of Israel to a kibbutz, a type of collective settlement where she could be studied and guided by the government. In fact, she became the first super agent of a new Israeli super soldier program with Mossad. To mask her activities, the government trained her and fielded her as a police officer, and she's been working in that capacity for the government in this dual role ever since. She took on the codename Sabra, which is derived from a couple places. A Hebrew word, meaning a Jewish person born in Israel, also of a prickly pear that's native to the country, meant to mean both the pear and the people are hard on the outside, but sweet on the inside. After a while, her firstborn son Jacob was slain when some terrorists targeted a school bus full of kids. Sabra, on an unsanctioned mission, headed to Bethlehem to make the terrorists answer for their crimes, a story that came at a particularly relevant time in the 1980s. Conceptualized by Belinda Glass, Mark Gruenwald's first wife, and then created by Bill Mantlo and Sal Buscema, Sabra cameoed in the Incredible Hulk comic book with issue 250 before making her first full appearance a few issues later with issue 256. Our first glance of Sabra was a single panel as Silver Surfer passed through Israel's airspace on his surfboard during a run-in with the Incredible Hulk. And then Bruce Banner went to ground and hid in the cargo hold of the star of David Freighter which had sailed into Tel Aviv. When the cargo that Bruce was resting on was lifted out of the vessel by a crane, Bruce panicked and transformed into the Incredible Hulk. Policewoman Ruth Batsera, who at this time was still called Ruth Benser, was one of the first responders to make contact on scene. Soldiers showed up on the docks too and opened fire on the green monster, which only made the jade giant more angry. So Ruth decided she needed to change into Sabra. She went behind some cargo bales to change into her superhero outfit, but those were knocked over by the Hulk and they hit Sabra in the head and she was knocked out for a moment. Ruth did wake up though after the Hulk left and immediately finished changing into her blue and white superheroine gear. Sabra flew off to find the Hulk ready to defend her country from this rampaging monster. She found the Hulk attacking some terrorists who just bombed a cafe and killed Hulk's new friend. So Sabra flew down and unleashed a volley of anti-personnel energy quivers, another product of the Israeli super agent program. When Sabra landed, she let loose a second cluster of the weapons before she took the full power of a Hulk backhand. The energy quills then started to weaken the Hulk while she kept flying around him, launching volley after volley to try to bring him down. But Hulk's rage continued to flush the quill's paralytic agents from her system. The Hulk then leaped away with the body of the boy in his arms and Sabra vowed that Hulk would be taught a lesson, still not familiar with this being from North America just yet. She managed to catch up with him in the desert and said he's in league with the assassins and as an agent of the government charged Hulk with terrorism and murder. But Hulk replied saying the boy was Hulk's friend and she was a liar and went into a condemnation of territorial history with bad grammar so you know he hadn't transformed into Professor Hulk just yet. Hulk leapt away while Sabra fell to her knees before the dead boy. It took a Hulk to make her see the boy as a human and a monster to make her find her own humanity, so says the narration at the end of that issue. Her next appearance came in Contest of Champions, a three-issue miniseries which was Marvel Comics' first of its kind. For that story, Sabra was selected for Death's Team, opposing the Grandmaster's team in the contest. She was in the middle of fighting back a raiding party when she was teleported away and plopped down into a ghost town on a team with Arabian Knight and Iron Man to battle She-Hulk, Defensor, and Captain Britain. To keep the theme going, she ended up battling with She-Hulk soon thereafter. She-Hulk smacked Sabra out of the sky, but Arabian Knight's flying carpet cushioned her fall. Sabra then stole Captain Britain's scepter and he fell to the ground himself, and they ended up winning. After Ronald Reagan pardoned Hulk and made him a hero, Sabra then went to his ticker tape parade in New York City, representing Israel for the following ceremony. Sabra then got a big feature on the cover of Summer 1991's Marvel Superheroes. In that book, Sabra had transferred some power to a lady named Windstorm to save her life, presumably from an overdose, but now she was a villain in the Israelis for Anarchy movement and had attacked and taken hostages at a kibbutz. So the two ended up battling. Windstorm crushed a deaf boy under some rubble on purpose and Sabra was horrified. She was able to depower the villain and save the boy too after giving him the power that she had given Windstorm. Next, she got a great cover on Hulk's 386th issue. Here, Hulk was on a mission to stop the second coming of Hitler. Agamemnon had sent Achilles to bring in the evil boy, but Sabra, not knowing the story, stopped Achilles, so now that recovery op was now up to Hulk. So when Hulk and Rick Jones found them, they ran into Sabra once more, and again, Sabra and the Hulk battled. 
Sabra was so strong, she took numerous strikes from the massive hulking banner, and then tattered and beaten, she shot off some more quills at him, knocking Hulk off his feet long enough for her to escape. Hulk leapt at Sabra in the air, but Sabra was so fast that Hulk missed and fell into a museum. So to stop Hulk, Sabra flew down and kicked him in the face and then fired energy quills at his face, followed by a few more punches before Hulk was able to hit her hard enough she went through the building's outer walls. They fought near the wailing wall and then Hulk pulled her cape off, the item that lets her fly. They continued to strike at each other as Sabra unleashed all her anger to which Hulk sighed and said, okay, you win. Sabra then listened about that evil boy, so they teamed up then for the first time to stop him. A while later, Sabra jumped to the new warrior's title. She was now working protective detail for Yitzhak Rabin, the Israeli prime minister at the time, while the new warriors patrolled outside the limo. In the middle of Manhattan traffic, super-powered Syrian terrorists attacked a motorcade. One of them, Patal, is the one who killed Sabra's son. At the peace conference, it turns out that Patal was there to protect President al-Assad. As the two ironically walked down the aisle together at the conference, side by side, Sabra's eyes lit up and she unleashed a devastating attack on Batal. And then, eyes lit, fought the new warriors too, taking down justice in front of everyone before flying out of the building. Sabra then battled the new warriors on the Queensboro Bridge. Firestar blasted Sabra and she tumbled into the water as she spoke her jealousy at justice for swooning over Sabra. Sabra flew out and blasted him and took out Speedball too. Sabra battled Justice again and nearly killed him until he said a mourner's prayer, the same one she'd said for her slain son. And that memory freed her mind of the mind control. She broke out of it with a tear rolling down her cheek. Sabra allowed herself to be apprehended so they could perform some experiments in an effort to find out who brainwashed her. It turns out that Sabra also liked Justice, as we see a few issues later when she called him on the phone from Israel to see if he wanted to go on a date. I wonder what Firestar would think of that. A while after that, Sabra found herself helping out outlaw mutants being targeted by Bastion's Operation Zero Tolerance. She was hacking files from Mossad, her own organization, for them. Sabra stole the disc and outside ended up fighting the humanoid Prime Sentinels. Sabra managed to take them out by destroying the car that they were in. And she made it to the docks in Manhattan just in time to save a cop from a couple of criminals, then met up with Iceman, Mero, and Dr. Reyes and helped them escape from an army of Sentinels. Mero and Dr. Reyes questioned her motives, so she quickly put a stop to that and explained it to them the best she could, including the bits about losing her son. They made landfall on the shores of Connecticut in the hunt for a boy that was Bastion's only weakness. They managed to take out Bastion with a last minute assist from S.H.I.E.L.D. And of course that disc that she had freed was immensely helpful to their efforts. Sabra was back in Jerusalem a few issues later, now on her laptop. Sabra then flew to an ambassador's balcony and recruited for help following leads on Magneto and his Eric Lencher name. They tried to catch up with him in Romania at the house of a forger who'd made the identity, but they were too late. Magneto, now Magnus, had killed the forger. Sabra was able to take out Joseph, whom she thought to be Magneto, and then fought with Maggot at the same time. Instead, Joseph asked for her help looking for the real Magneto, but she ended up flying off on her own to pursue her new leads. She then reached out to Nightcrawler and Colossus for help when Legion was psychically attacking Israel. Sabra met up with Nightcrawler, Megan, Colossus, and Kitty Pride at Megiddo, the biblical site of Armageddon. In the X-Jet later, Sabra told Nightcrawler that Professor X had asked her to join Excalibur on numerous occasions, but she had declined. They all ended up battling with Legion's fractured mind at the foot of the Temple of Solomon. And Legion nearly took Sabra out, but Shadowcat came in at the last moment. They stopped Legion, and at the end, Nightcrawler offered her a spot on the Excalibur team, but she declined, citing her responsibility to the people of Israel. We eventually see Sabra at a military bunker where Joseph was still undergoing tests to see just who he truly was. But he soon thereafter died and so Sabra joined the X-Men for his funeral. And then, a hologram of High Evolutionary appeared before the X-Men declaring he needed to end mutants to save humankind. And Sabra was one depicted as falling to High Evolutionary, though not permanently, because Sabra was around to go on global news to declare Magneto a monster and a threat and to prepare for the looming war with Genosha in X-Men 111. After the war with Magneto and with Professor X outing himself to the world as a mutant, X Corporation was founded and Sabra joined, working out of their Paris office. In 2004's Secret War series, we learn that Sabra shot down a terrorist cell that was planning a nerve gas attack in the Gaza Strip. In her work with X Corp, she cleaned up a bomb site that was targeting the local Cerebra along with the likes of Lifeguard, Neil Shara, and Monet. And then during the Civil War event when the Superhuman Registration Act was passed into law, Mossad lent Sabra to the United States Office of National Emergency in exchange for intelligence and technology to help Israel activate their own registration program. 
Sabra was paired with Micromax and assigned to Bishop's ONE team to track down mutants who'd escaped from the Xavier Institute. One file notes that due to the loss of her child to unnecessary violence, she's in full support of the SHRA law. Sabra also spent some time working with Union Jack and MI5 to stop raid terrorists who were attacking Great Britain, and she took on Zarin, Machete, the Death Throws, a Dreadnought, and in the course of this work developed connection with the Arabian Night. During Secret Invasion, Sabra was back in Israel and was struck down by a scroll who blasted her chest with his eyes. In 2008, she told a tale of a time when she fought Hydra, evoking stories like David and Goliath and Samson as she regaled her friend with the tale. It turns out that Sabra's dad was then an Air Force pilot and had died trying to rescue her during that conflict. During the Ends of the Earth story, while Spider-Man, Black Widow, and Silver Sable hunted down Dr. Octopus and the Sinister Six, Spider-Man put out a call to international heroes for help, and Sabra heard his call. She ended up in a direct exchange with a swarm of nasty Octobots. She was then going to stop one of the missiles by riding it, but Crossbones ended up shooting Sabra. However, it wasn't a fatal shot. In 2012, Storm of the X-Men flew into a private Mossad hangar in France to meet with Sabra, who provided the X-Men team with safe harbor, maintenance, food, and a discreet doctor. Sabra continued working with Aurora's team, reporting back to them about international package shipments and bioweapons and black market technology and software, and told them it was now in the hands of a cult called the Heavenly Path. Storm then asked her to up her favor and expand her search for proto-mutant activity on a global scale. So via Mossad, Sabra began working with Homeland Security on surveillance. And she tracked one of the proto-mutants down at an airport, but he ended up seeing her and got the jump on Sabra, but she overcame him and was able to meet up with Aurora's team at JFK Airport to hand him over to the X-Men team for interrogation. When the guy jumped out the window and disappeared with Pixie, Sabra worked with Psylocke to find them via their psychic transponders. Using her connections and still working with Storm, she helped the 2013 X-Men team cross into Budapest and land at an airport with their X-Jet while they hunted for Archaea and Karima. Sabra later met up with Psylocke and Storm to say that Gabriel Shepard could help the X-Men in their search for Lady Deathstrike and her team, even as they continued their search for Archaea. Sabra said that she could help them not cause World War III, but Psylocke warned it would be tough work. Sabra sent Gabriel to recover Monet St. Croix after Amor the Enchantress took her out in Dubai. She then had to report back to the X-Men when she learned that someone purchased the remains of Selene. Again, Storm needed her help when a supervillain named The Future broke out of a prison and wounded some X-Men students. Storm wanted Sabra to pull all the strings she could, field all the assets that she could bring to bear, and whatever it cost, Aurora said, spend it. So she went to work, alongside Gabriel and Pixie this time. During 2015's Secret Wars, Sabra was in the Arcadia domain on Battleworld, which was run by She-Hulk and A-Force. And then during the Secret Empire fiasco when Captain America was Hydra Cap, Sabra went to work on the guerrilla front opposing Hydra and attacking Hydra data storage facilities to undermine their efforts and in one case, transfer data to a USB drive for the underground movement. She then attended an international super summit led by King of Wakanda and, and then current Avengers leader Black Panther, an attempt to forget about international borders to all work together to protect planet Earth. Arabian Knight and Sabra, seated next to each other, agreed. In 2000's X-Men Millennial Visions, which took place on Earth-1021, Sabra was part of a secret International Weapon X team, along with Gunfire, Maverick, Spitfire, Vanguard, and Flashback. And then during the House of M secret event, Sabra was part of the Red Guard that opposed the Hood's Masters of Evil. And so, Sabra's still out there working for her government and on an international and intergalactic basis to protect all humanity and the greater good. In fact, in September of 2022 at Disney's D23 event, it was announced that Shira Haas would play Sabra for spring 2024's Captain America New World Order. So where will she show up next? We'll have to wait and see, which means that's a wrap on this one, my friends. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.